The earliest application of computers in economics in the 1950s was to analyze economic data series. Around that time, analyzing the behavior of stock market over time was a natural candidate. Many believed that the peaks and troughs in economic performance must show up in stock price movements, suggesting that discernible price patterns are there and can be detected with certainty. But to his surprise, Maurice Kendall in 1953 examined this proposition and found no predictable patterns in stock price. Prices seemed to evolve randomly. They were as likely to go up as they were to go down on any particular day, regardless of past performance. The findings were disappointing and disturbing to many financial economists during that time. Many of them tried to reverse their interpretation of Kindle's study. It soon became apparent that random price movement is a building block of a well-functioning or efficient market, not an irrational one. In this video, I am going to discuss four aspects of stock market efficiency. Random works model, efficient market hypothesis, also known as EMH, implication of EMH, stock market anomalies and are markets efficient? Let's understand random walks with a hypothetical example. Suppose Kindle had discovered that changes in stock prices are predictable. This indicates that anybody with superior skill of finding patterns can get rich quickly, but not so fast. For example, suppose that your model predicts with great confidence that Apple, which is selling at $165 per share, will rise to $200 in a week. What would all investors with access to this prediction model do today? The answer is very simple. They would place a great web of immediate buy orders to cash in on the upcoming price increase. No one holding Apple stock, however, would be willing to sell now. These investors will ask for $200 today rather than waiting for a week. What you see here is that the net effect would be an immediate jump in Apple's price to $200. A potential investor has no opportunity to make abnormal profit from this price increase associated with new information. This example illustrates why Kendall's attempt to find recurrent patterns in stock price movements was likely to fail. Thus, not only will new information be reflected in the stock price immediately, but also an investor can not predict with greater confidence the timing of new information as well. It's all random. This is the essence of the argument that stock prices should follow a random walk, which is the notion that stock price changes are random and unpredictable. If stock price movements were predictable, this would be damning evidence of stock market inefficiency because the ability to predict prices would indicate that all available information was not already reflected in stock price. Therefore, the efficient market hypothesis or EMH is the hypothesis that prices of securities fully reflect available information about securities. This graph illustrates the response of stock prices to new information in an efficient market. Specifically, announcement of a takeover attempt should cause the stock price to jump immediately, leaving no time for potential investors to exploit the news and make abnormal profit. A logical question is why we should expect stock prices to reflect all available information. It's the competition among investors who are information seekers. These investors will uncover the information that is largely overlooked by others for an abnormal profit. However, as they continue to exploit available opportunities, the market will eventually move to the equilibrium point where there won't be any information advantage left for laggers. Therefore, competition is a source of stock market efficiency. As for the type of EMH, there are three variations of market efficiency. The weak form hypothesis asserts that stock prices already reflect all information that can be derived 
by examining market trading data such as history of past prices, trading volume, or short interest. This version of efficiency implies that trend analysis is fruitless. The semi-strong hypothesis states that all publicly available information regarding the prospects of a firm must be reflected in stock price. This public information includes firm's product line, quality of management, balance sheet composition, earnings forecast, or patents. Finally, the strong form version of EMH states that stock prices reflect all information relevant to the firm, even including information available only to company insiders. This version of EMH is quite extreme, and many people believe such version doesn't exist. Notice one thing that all versions of the EMH have in common. They all assert that prices should reflect available information. Therefore, using current information, we cannot be sure if today's price will ultimately prove themselves to have been too high or too low. This leads us to take a look at different types of stock prices analysis through the lens of EMH. Technical analysis is essentially the search for recurrent and predictable patterns in the stock prices. Although technicians recognize the value of the information, they believe such information is not necessary for a profitable trading strategy. This is because whatever the reason for a change in price, if price responds slowly enough, the technician will be able to identify a trend that can be exploited during the price adjustment period. Thus, the key to successful technical analysis is a sluggish response of stock price to an event. This is definitely against the notion of efficient market hypothesis. The technicians are often called as chartists. One of the most commonly heard components of technical analysis is the resistance level or support level. Resistance level is a price level above which it is difficult for stock prices to rise. On the other hand, support level is a price level below which it is supposedly unlikely for a stock price to fall. The efficient market hypothesis implies that technical analysis is without merit. Another type of stock analysis is the fundamental analysis, which uses earnings and dividend prospects of the firm and expectation of future interest to determine proper stock value. If that value exceeds the current stock price in the market, the fundamental analyst would recommend purchasing the stock. Once again, the efficient market hypothesis predicts that most fundamental analysis also is doomed to failure. Fundamental analysis is model dependent and a lot of assumptions are fed into the model. This could be an obvious reason why fundamental analysis is hard and the price estimates would vary dramatically. You can make money only if your analysis is better than that of your competitors because the market price will already reflect all commonly recognized information. EMH also has implications for active and passive investors. Active investors are those who look for mispriced securities by categorizing them as under or overvalued and are more likely to utilize fundamental analysis. On the other hand, passive investors buy a well-diversified portfolio without attempting to search out mispriced securities and are more likely to invest in index funds. Proponents of efficient market hypothesis believe that active management is largely wasted effort and unlikely to justify the expenses incurred. Thus, they advocate passive investment strategy that makes no attempt to outsmart the market. Another question is, if efficient market is true, what is the point of doing portfolio management? Well, there is a role for portfolio management even in an efficient market. Investors' optimal positions will vary according to factors such as age, tax bracket, risk aversion, and employment. The role of the portfolio manager in an efficient market is to tailor the portfolio to these needs rather than to beat the market. But we still in doubt as to are stock markets really efficient? There seems to have two camps, one believing efficient market hypothesis and the other doesn't. 
Those who are against EMH bring a lot of market anomalies to attention. These anomalies are more often than not predictable, can be exploited to make abnormal profit and most importantly violates the core assumption of efficient market hypothesis. Examples of anomalies or predictable patterns in the markets that are supposedly weak from efficient are momentum effect, which is the tendency of poorly performing stocks and well performing stocks in one period to continue the, that abnormal performance in the following periods. Reversal effects, which is the tendency of poorly performing stocks and well performing stocks in one period to experience reversal in the following periods. Examples of anomalies in markets that are considered semi-strong from efficient are price earnings effect, which shows that portfolios of low PE stocks have exhibited higher average risk adjusted returns than high PE stocks. Small firm effect, which shows that stocks of small firms have earned abnormal returns primarily in the month of January. I'm sure there are a lot of other anomalies which I did not discuss in this video but you can take time to explore those if interested. All these anomalies point to the validity of efficient market hypothesis. Let's finish our discussion with a story. There is a telling joke about two economists walking down the street. Suddenly, they spot a $20 bill on the sidewalk. One of them starts to pick it up, but the other one says, leave it. His argument was, if the bill were real, someone would have picked it up already. A strong believer of efficient market hypothesis will paralyze the investor and make it appear that no research effort can be justified. This extreme view should be unwarranted. There are enough anomalies in the empirical literature to justify the search for underpriced securities that clearly work till today. Therefore, it would be wise to say that stock market may be very efficient, but the rewards of diligent intelligent or creative investors are still there. Thank you so much.